Do you know which Express LRS receivers work with which Express LRS transmitters? They're not all cross compatible with each other and it's really important that you don't make the mistake of buying the wrong gear. In this video, you're going to see which Express LRS transmitters work with which receivers and how to buy the right gear so you avoid wasting your money, but more importantly, wasting your time trying to get them to work. Express LRS is a really new and exciting radio protocol and being open source, it means any manufacturer can jump on board and produce hardware that works with the Express LRS firmware. First, you might buy a receiver and a transmitter and go to flash the firmware and then they don't bind or don't even work. Then this whole point of moving away from FreeSky is absolutely out of the window. One of the promises of ExpressLRS is to fix binding issues with a binding phrase. It's like building the Wi-Fi password into the transmitter and the receiver, and when they share the same passphrase, they automatically bind and just work. But you find out that the reason they're not binding is because the hardware isn't compatible and you've wasted your money buying the wrong stuff. When ExpressLRS first came onto the scenes, the developers found a way to change the firmware that runs on FreeSky R9 hardware and put ExpressLRS on it, and that removed the poor performance that R9 had. You can still do this today, and you can also do it with the Immersion RC Ghost hardware as well. However, this leads to the misconception that random receivers will connect with ExpressLRS transmitters. I've even seen people on Facebook try and bind ExpressLRS gear with Crossfire gear and wonder why it's not working. The way to think about ExpressLRS is kind of like Android. You have an open source firmware and hardware reference designs that any of the manufacturers can use and build their own hardware on. While something like TBS Crossfire, TBS Tracer, IRC Ghost and FreeSky, they're more like Apple in a sense. They each have a closed ecosystem where Crossfire only works with Crossfire, Tracer only works with Tracer, and Ghost only works with Ghost, and FreeSky, well, that doesn't even work with FreeSky. But the thing with IRC Ghost and FreeSky R9 is you can run ExpressLRS on them. However, that is more similar to running Windows on a Mac. However, FreeSky are now starting to produce ExpressLRS specific hardware as well, which can even add to the confusion. Given the amount of cheap ExpressLRS hardware on the market, converting Ghost to ExpressLRS is really an expensive endeavor, not to mention irreversible. Converting R9 is not the simplest way to go about it either. And what that means is you need to ensure that the hardware you're buying is specifically designed for ExpressLRS. And it'll be very apparent it will say ExpressLRS. But there are still a few more things that we need to line up, otherwise our gear won't work. You need to ensure when you buy hardware that it operates on the same frequency. ExpressLRS has two different frequencies that it mainly operates on. 2.4 GHz and 900 MHz. You can't mix 2.4 GHz with 900 MHz because they're on a completely different frequency and unable to communicate with each other no matter how hard you try. However, if you are in Europe, you may also need to use 868 MHz and all the 900 MHz gear works with 868, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so now you've got Express LRS designated hardware and it's all 2.4 GHz gear, but it still may not work together. Well, you need to ensure that the firmware that is on your transmitter and receiver are on the same major release. So if you buy a new receiver and flash any of the V2 firmware releases, but your transmitter is still on one of the earlier V1 firmware releases, they're not going to work because V2 isn't backwards compatible with V1. This doesn't mean that just because there is a minor release, such as going from 2.0 to 2.1, you need to go and update your whole fleet. It is best practice, even though it's a real pain in the butt. All my stuff now is running various V2 releases, and I only ever update them when I need to change anything on Betaflight or have to fix a build because of a crash. Just make sure your settings are the same between your transmitter and your receiver, especially your binding phrase, and you will be good to go. What about if you're using one of the Beta FPV light radios with ExpressLRS? They aren't compatible with the main ExpressLRS configurator because Beta FPV have forked the project and merged the code into the radio. The Light Radio 2 SE ExpressLRS and the Light Radio 3 ExpressLRS are all 2.4 GHz transmitters. So as long as you have a 2.4 GHz receiver, they should work. What you need to do is update your light radio using the Beta FPV configurator to the latest firmware which supports 2.0. Then there are also SPI receivers that are built into the all-in-one flight controllers like on the Meteor 65, the Mobula 6 or the Crux 35. Betaflight 4.3 has the LRS firmware built in the code especially for ExpressLRS over SPI. 
All you need to do is update your chord to the latest version of Betaflight 4.3, convert your binding phrase to UID bytes, and paste that into the CLI. However, make sure you take a full CLI diff before you update Betaflight. The key thing to note that the PID and filter settings from any 4.2 or earlier versions of Betaflight are not compatible with 4.3. You're gonna to need to use the tool linked in the description to ensure that when you paste the diff back into Betaflight, it's safe to be used on 4.3. To make any Express LRS transmitter work with any Express LRS receiver, there are some things that we need to ensure. First, you need to make sure that you've got Express LRS specific gear. They have to be on the same frequency, such as 2.4 gigahertz. They have to be on the same major release, such as V2. And the binding phrase and build settings need to be the same. If we have all of those four things lined up, then your gear's gonna work because who makes the equipment really isn't a factor in compatibility. However, if just one of those four things is not the same between the transmitter and the receiver, it's not gonna work at all. If you wanna know how to set up your radio to run Express LRS, watch this video here. And if you've got a Beta FPV light radio, watch this one as well. I'm Darren from Everything Micro FPV. Until next time, don't forget to send it.